Um, nothing intelligent to say. Uh, plus, you all are probably wanting to get home, but I'm just appreciative to be a part of that thing. It was uh, it was special for both sides. There's a lot of plays you can analyze if you want to, but uh, they all make up one crazy game. And uh, probably both teams could have had six or seven players uh, at this table, but I think it's fitting the two guys that were selected for whatever reason uh, to be up here. Um, the guy to the left obviously was incredible on the mound, but the presence was more incredible than anything. I mean, he hasn't been starting, so I think he ended up at about 100 pitches. And I, I tried to take him out, but he gave me the Heisman. Uh, so I went back to the dugout. And then at one point in the dugout, he's got Austin Jasloff, who, who had a big play for us, massaging his arm. And I had never seen that before. Uh, but it was, I want to do this for the team. Uh, I want this for the team. And obviously laid it on the line and, um, you know, picked up to his buddy Doe. And then Halvey took the ball from him and did what he did. And then the guy, the guy to the right of me, it, it, it wasn't, you know, he, he comes in. It's his first year in our program despite knowing the kid. And it was not a pretty fall. It just wasn't. It was a tough one. And, uh, you know, our team has kind of moved forward and formed its own personality. Uh, we've come together. And um, that's kind of mirrored his, his kind of – you know, time at our place. It's just been awesome to see him kind of start to shine through with his personality and get more comfortable. And as he's done that, he's become a better player. But the hell with that. It's just more fun to come to work and be around with him. So, again, I'm appreciative for being a part of the game, but I'm pretty appreciative to be around the kids I get to be around. Let's start in the front here on the left, and we'll come back here and then to the right and then back up here. Johnny, how rewarding is winning a game like that when the, your team shows the mental fortitude they did, especially given the yeah, no, I, I think, again, it shows progress. And, and that's what you want. It, it's tough. Um, you know, spoke with my dad, and I don't know what he did, but all the teams he coached in different sports, they always seem to peak at the end of the year. And there's no recipe for that. And, you know, you might play your best stat sheet game somewhere in the middle of the year. Uh, but really, if you can map it out, and, and both teams uh, that played in that game, Clemson and ourselves, I've, I've heard the announcers you know, compare the both of us as teams that didn't start out great, had to kind of find out who plays this position, who goes where, and it just makes it more rewarding at the end. And uh, to me, it would have been rewarding. It sounds crazy, but, man, I don't, I don't know what they had to say, but how, how, you can't be upset with your effort, either team. So my words to the team would have been the same, uh, win or lose after that thing. Yeah, it won't be a great answer, but to me, that that guy did the same as our pitchers. I mean, he was past, and I don't want to speak for him. He, I don't think you say he's past E, but there was a lot that went into the buildup to that of, you know, battling and obviously had a lot of strikeouts. I, I don't know how many, but he always has a lot of strikeouts when he pitches. But um, it was reminiscent of some other lineups we've had. Yeah, double-digit strikeouts. Um, our, our guys made sure that they had competitive at bats and, and, you know, eventually we, we were saying in the dugout, we're going to get to this guy. And again, not many have. Um, and then that sets the table for Zane to be a, in a position, you know, to do what he did. And if I'm not mistaken, it's been a long night, two strikes and he's been known to take a hack. Um, and it was just a good short straight to the ball and, and, and fight. I think it was Oh two. He gets it back to two, two. And he and I've had a conversation before. I'm not taking any credit, but, Sometimes as a hitter, when you miss your pitch or you don't get to, you know, take your, your A hack, you have to reset. And he did that and got himself in a position to be in that count and then just a good short punch. And he's hit a lot of them over the fence. And Coach Elander joke all fall long because he hit a bunch in the fall that he's glad he's doing it wearing our color orange, uh, you know, because, like I said, he's, he's done it often. <laughs> yeah, um, I, to be honest with you, uh, we had a conversation before the game. I was just kind of waiting for, um, you know, it, it was his game. Um, it was going to be the combination of two guys that are first rounders and are going to have lengthy careers in the big leagues, not just because of their stuff, but how they go about their business. So that was, our, that was what we, you know, thought of as our best punch. And we were going to start Halvey later in the deal if we needed to. So, you know, we obviously didn't fall off with his stuff. But 
um, just expected him to come to me. And when he did, um, he said to get Halvey hot. And then he said again, but I can get the team a, a few more outs. And again, Halvey was pretty sharp, but to me, the difference might have been in the entire game, just those extra outs when we were wanting to take them out, um, you know, and then a couple extra too, like like you said, when when he refused to to leave the game. So I was, I was just trying to battle and just keep the game alive. And luckily I got fastball at the handle. And I'd swung through, swung through two fastballs already. And so I kind of already know, knew what it looked like. And he gave me one over the plate. Just had a, just had a good swing on it. Say is on the right here in the front, then back over here. Say is, is, is tonight your first successful stiff one on Tony? When yeah, I don't think I've ever done that to a coach before, but, you know, you know, it was a big opportunity, and I thought I could go back out there. You know, I thought I'm, I knew my body the best, so when I saw him come out, I just waved him off. Yeah. And what about this injury? Uh, I don't even know if I remember what happened, uh, to be honest. I think we had uh, bases loaded, punch out, and then a double play. I mean, um, you know, you, you make the decision to play the guys back, and, and, and that comes from Coach A. And uh, those two guys turned a hell of a double play. It was hard workers working hard for a hard worker, you know. Thank you in the front. And then you get on back here. Tony, how do you go about when you just a game like this when you got Ethan Hay at first, the freshman double play, the Bronx is hitting? How do you juggle a lot <clears> of <throat> Yeah, again, I mentioned my dad, and he told me the first thing he said, I thought congrats was coming, and he said I would have done a lot of things differently. And, and I said the same thing. I mean, once the game's over, I, I think both sides would be wasting their time saying this pitch or this play. At no point in that game was there a lack of effort. And when you got young guys out there, there's going to be some goofy things happen, some good things and some bad things. Uh, but a, a lot of that stuff is kind of talked about. Um, we had several different meetings the last two days, just kind of trying to envision scenarios. And again, we're towards the end of the year, and we had to go through a process we didn't have to go through uh, on certain occasions with our teams in the past where we had to kind of figure out who can do what and who can't. And, um, you know, we trust all these guys. There's, a lot, there's some guys that haven't pitched yet and some guys that haven't swung the bat. And um, obviously we trust our two catchers. Um, so, and you know, you talk about managing the game. I'd be remiss if I didn't at least bring it up. Check the resume, man. I, I joked with – I'm talking about Frank. I joked with Kyle Peterson the other day because ESPN came to talk to a few people, and I said, talk to him. Um, he's the one that, that gets it done. And, again, the resume is pretty strong. And uh, to have to sit there and call pitches throughout that game, I know Burns, he was calling his own game at times. Uh, for that length, has got to be stressful as all get out for both sides. All right, so we've got how many more questions? We've got three. These will be the final three questions. We'll start here. Tony, is that the best defensive game you all had this season? I don't know. I'll take it if you're going to call it out like that. I know these guys punched a lot of guys out, too, and the guy to the right of me made a couple of really nice plays coming in and getting the ball. And, uh, you know, double plays have been at a premium for us. It's not like we don't have, I mean, we've got two pretty athletic guys in the middle of the field. Uh, maybe this will start a little trend for those two guys. That that occurred earlier in the year. I mean, him and Joyce, the the way they kind of battled back, and obviously, uh, you know, Joyce man had a little bit of a setback, but Halvey's just kind of continually gotten better and better as he's gone. And um, you know. I'll say this, he's so fiery. I, I joked about Christian Moore last night. Halvey, same way, he's so fiery that at times it kind of goes, to, like maybe it's my fault, follow the leader. Sometimes the energy goes in the wrong directions. But, uh, again, tonight, and, and Clemson did the same thing, but our guys were so keyed in on helping each other and picking each other up. There were some painful moments on offense, but guys were quick to pick each other up or the pitchers went back out there and got it done even though we, we squandered an opportunity to score. So, you got the best version of some of our guys, including Halvey, when they're just focused on competing and getting the job done for their for their mates. All right, final question back here. Chris Trevor, SpeedDirect.com. Obviously, you played in a super smoky, really big crowd like this one, plenty in the SEC. How, how, how did that prepare you for tonight and also having this crowd compared to those? And uh, second part of that question, um, just being able to snap a 17-game winning streak in the manner in which you did down to your final strike, does that make this even more special? 
Yeah, I'll answer the second question after the, the first one. Uh, you know, at Hoover, there, it's, there's pain in the air for the Vols, uh, Vol fans included, that make the trip. Our tournament's unique. You get a one and done. Uh, but the comment I made to a few of you guys that were there was it just the league prepares you, and so does the ACC. Um, but the crowds we had to play in front of, you know, I shouldn't say it because now I'll hear something new tomorrow, but I've kind of heard about everything myself, and I don't know if, if these guys agree with that. So it, it's right on par. It's, it's right on par. I mean, we, we feel great about our league and all sports, and you, you stick your chest out, but it's, it's the same deal, man. And there's a, there's a long list of tradition here. I mean, Coach Leggett being in the dugout, so it, it was about the same. And you guys barely said anything. You got anything to throw out before I answer the last question? They're probably hungry and, and thirsty. You good? Good. Yeah, he speaks softly. Yeah. But, no, I mean, baseball is a game of percentages. And, it, it you know, maybe we got lucky because of that, because they've had a long streak. But, again, I think you got the clash you did because regardless of how the last few games have gone, you got two teams that are playing for each other and continually getting better. Thank you, guys.